In this presentation, we will take a look at multiple choice questions related to payroll. First question, when is a W-4 needed? A, after each pay period, B, quarterly, C, yearly, D, at the time of hire. So we'll go through this again, see if we can go through the process of elimination. When is a W-4 needed? Now. If we know what a W-4 is, this, this question's a bit pretty straightforward. If we don't know, then uh, we may, you know, have to go through some guessing problems here. So it's kind of similar to a W-2, so we might think hmm, it's kind of related to the W-2, possibly somehow the W-2 reporting wages at the end of the year. If we go through this, after each pay period, the W-4 after each pay period. Now, um, the W-4, we, we're probably thinking it's like a W-2, which we give to the employee and or uh, the the IRS both typically so we're not really gonna give the W-4 each pay period we're gonna give a pay stub so there's no real form that we're really gonna give each pay period we're gonna have to file quarterly forms yearly forms uh, and uh, and whatnot so it's probably not each pay period quarterly we may think quarterly but quarterly forms are the 941s so it's typical to get the 941s and the 940s mixed up but it's not a it's not a w4 it's a nine nine something 940 941 it's a 941 so it's not b and then yearly we may we, we may consider that if it's like a w2 which we get yearly and it's similar to w4 then we might that might be one consideration and d says at the time of hire which again that might be one time period where we have to do something here so between c and d if we read through this again when is a w4 needed either c yearly or d at the time of hire and between those two uh it's actually going to be the time of hire and you could think you know it's related to the w2 information in that we're going to get the information that will be needed to process withholdings and the w2 at the end of the year so so we need this at the beginning they're going to fill out the w4 and that's going to give us the allowances and their social security number and uh, all that information which we will then need to process the payroll and withhold the federal income tax in particular and then generate the W-2 at the end of the year. Next question. Which is form is needed for a new employee? I believe this is an unnecessary is. Which form is needed for a new employee? A. W-2 B. W-4 C. 1099 D. W3. So let's go through the process of elimination. Which form is needed for a new employee? A, a W2. Now we might think, of course, you know, at the end of the year, that the new employee is going to need, of course, a W2. So we might leave that. B says a W4, which may be less familiar to us than a W2, but still seems reasonable. So we can leave that. C says a 1099. And that's not really a, an employee form, that's a uh, contractor form, which is kind of like an employee, but not really an employee. So I'm going to say it's not the 1099. And then D says the W-3, which again, we may not know what a, what a W-3 is, but it's kind of similar, sounds same to, as the W-2s and whatnot. So if we go through this, we got the W-2, W-4, and W-3. So let's read through it again. Which form is needed for a new employee? Like, and we could say, you know, the W-2 and the W-3 are related. Um, so we might say, you know, the W-3 is summing up the W-2s and they're at the end of the year. And the best answer is the W-4. And that's because that, that happens at the beginning of the year. So although new employees will have a W-2 process, which will be part of the W-3, that's not going to happen at the point in time that we get the new employee in place. The first thing we're going to do is have the W-4, which will be then used to calculate withholdings in particular for uh, and, uh, and be used to help us generate the W-2s and W-3s at the end of the year. So final answer B, question, which form is needed for a new employee? B, W-4.